Hi judges, welcome to another segment of Juan Arliwag Memorial High School Senior High School Math TV. Last time we were able to get the standard equation of an ellipse if we are given different conditions. So we will continue what we had discussed last time. But before I discuss these examples, I'd like to remind you of some important facts about an ellipse. Always remember that the midpoint of the endpoints of the vertices, the foci, and the co-vertices is just the center. Again, if you are getting the center of the ellipse and you're given endpoints of the vertices, the foci, and the co-vertices, all you have to do is to get the midpoint of those endpoints, and that is the center. Okay, so let's now try to answer the continuation of finding an equation of an ellipse if we are given different conditions. So example number 11, find an equation of the ellipse. We are given the first condition. The first condition is that the foci, negative 3 and negative 6 and negative 3, 2. Again, the foci is located at negative 3, negative 6 and negative 3, 2. So let's try to graph the foci negative 3, negative 6, negative 3, negative 6. So let's say this is F1. It is located at negative 3, negative 6. How about for the second endpoint, negative 3, positive 2. Therefore, it is F2. Its location is negative 3, positive 2. Okay. So if you are now given F1 and F2, remember that the midpoint of these points is our center. So let's try to get the midpoint. So let's try to get the midpoint of F1 and F2. So this is just equal to negative 3 plus negative 3 over 2 for the x coordinate. For the y coordinate, we will be having negative 6 plus 2 over 2. Therefore, the center now is located at negative 3 plus negative 3, that is negative 6 over 2. Negative 6 plus 2, that would be negative 4 over 2. And the center should be located at negative 6 over 2 is negative 3. Negative 4 over 2 is negative 2. Okay, let's now try to plot this point, the center. Its location is negative 3, negative 2. So, negative 3, negative 2, this is now the center. Okay, so this is the center and its location is negative 3, negative 2. Okay, from the center going to the foci, that would be C. From the center going to another point of the foci, that would be C. And what is that length? What is that distance? So that is 1, 2, 3, 4. Therefore, that is 4. From the center, this is negative 3, negative 6. And this is negative 3, negative 2. So from negative 6, it becomes negative 2. Therefore, that the value of C is negative 4 or positive 4. That is plus minus 4. Therefore, C then for this one is 4. We now have the value of C. And as far as we could remember, our foci now, F1 and F2, is located in the vertical line. Therefore, if it is um, a vertical line, we could say that this is major vertical axis. And if it is major vertical axis, the formula that we will be using is x minus h quantity squared over b squared plus y minus k quantity squared over a squared is equal to 1. So this is the formula that we will be using since this is major vertical and this is a squared and a is greater than b and it comes with y squared. Okay, do we have now the value of a? Not yet. Do we have the value of b? Not yet. But we have the value of C. From the second condition, for any point on the ellipse, the sum of its distances from the foci is 14. Again, from any point on the ellipse, the sum of its distances from the foci is 14. If we are given this statement again, therefore we could say that this is 2A because this is a constant. So that is a constant based from the definition of an ellipse, locus of all points in the plane the sum of those distances from two fixed points is a constant. And that constant is 2a. Therefore, 2a is equal to 14 
Divide both sides by 2. Therefore, a is equal to 7. And a squared now is equal to 49. So, we now have a squared. Therefore, if we have c, again, a squared is equal to 49. c is equal to 3. Therefore, c squared is equal to 9. So, we need now to find the value of b squared. And the formula for b squared is very simple. That is just a squared minus c squared. We'll now be having 49 minus. Okay, so this becomes 49 minus what is our c squared? I, our c should be 4. This should be 4. Again, this should be 4. Therefore, our c squared is 16. Therefore, 49 minus 16. 49 minus 16 is 33. And that is our b squared. Based on this graph, we could say that c is equal to 4. I'm very sorry with this. Therefore, c squared is equal to 16. And b squared is a squared minus c squared. 49 minus 16 is 33. So we now have the value of b squared. We now have the value of a squared. We're now ready to um, substitute this to the formula or the standard form. So this becomes x minus h of the center, which is negative 3. So therefore, that becomes x plus 3 quantity squared over b squared. Since this is major vertical, this is mva. So over b squared, which is 33 plus y minus k, our k is negative 2, so that becomes y plus 2 quantity squared over a squared. What is our a squared? That is 49 over 49 is now equal to 1. So this is now the equation of an ellipse with foci located at negative 3, negative 6, and the other endpoint of the foci is negative 3, positive 2. And for any point on the ellipse, the sum of its distances from the foci is 14. Remember that if you have this condition or this statement, that is always equal to 2a. That constant is always equal to 2a. So we're now ready to answer the problem number 12. So for the problem number 12, we are now given vertices. And the vertices now is in the form of 2 minus square root of 61, negative 5, and 2 plus square root of 61, negative 5. And the other condition, the minor axis, is 12 units long. So in this case, I will not anymore graph. I will not anymore graph this one. So the vertices is 2 minus square root of 1, negative 5, and 2 plus square root of, uh, square root of 61, I mean, and negative 5. So for this one, I will write V1 is 2 minus square root of 61, negative 5. V2 is 2 plus square root of 61, positive, negative 5. Okay. So this is the technique that I am always using in order for me to get the values of A, B, and C if we are given two points with this one. Okay. So based on our past discussions involving the formula in getting the vertices, we could say that this takes the form h plus minus a. Why a? Because the, the given is vertices. And when we say vertices, it comes with the variable a. That is h plus minus a k. Okay, from this one, we could finally get the value of h. Therefore, the value of h, therefore, the center is located at hk, and the center is located at 2, that is h, and the value of k, which is negative 5. So that is the technique in order for us to solve for the center if we are given the vertices in this form. Again, if you are given vertices in this form, or if you are given foci or co-vertices in this form, you just need to write it this way. And then write the formula for either the vertices, the foci, or the co-vertices. And then, you will just arrange this in this, um, in this form. So, from this one, we'll now be having the value of A. Therefore, A is equal to plus minus square root of 61. Therefore, A squared now is equal to 61. We now have the value of A squared. But sir, I have a question. 
what will now be the nature axis? In this case, since we are changing the value of x, this is the x-axis, therefore, we'll now be having major horizontal axis. Okay, major horizontal axis. And if we have major horizontal axis, I will just erase this one. If we have major horizontal axis, the equation now would be x minus h quantity squared over a squared. Since major horizontal axis, a squared will always be with x plus y minus k quantity squared over b squared is equal to 1. We now have the value of h and k in the form of 2, negative 5. We now have the value of a squared, which is 61, but we do not have the value yet of b squared. Okay, how do we solve for b squared? We are given another condition. And with the last condition, we are given the minor axis is 12 units long. And when we are um, given this condition, it states here minor axis. When we have minor axis, the length of the minor axis is always 2b. Therefore, what is the length of the given? 12 units. Minor axis daw, sabi it is 12 units. So 2b is equal to 12. Divide both sides by 2. Divide both sides by 2. B now is equal to 6. Therefore, B squared is equal to 36. We now have A squared. We now have B squared. We're now ready to substitute this in the formula or the standard form. This becomes X. What is our age? That is minus 2 quantity squared over A squared, which is 61, plus Y minus K quantity squared, which becomes y our k is negative 5 so that is y plus 5 quantity squared over what is our b squared our b squared is 36 is equal to 1 therefore this is now the equation of the ellipse given the vertices in this form if you are given vertices in this form you just need to arrange it like this one so this is my way in solving it easily so, we're using the vertices. We're now able to get the value of H, K, and A. And we're given another condition. Minor axis is 12 units long. So, these are just reminders. And this is how I solve an equation of an ellipse given different conditions. So, I hope you learned something for today. And please, if you have comments, suggestions, and clarifications, please do message me. And I am Engineer Jod Edward Hernandez saying that mathematics is always fun. Goodbye and God bless.